Hi guys, this is Comic Artist Pro Secrets. I'm Ethan Van Skyver, your host, artist for TC Comics for 20 years or so. Um, maybe longer, who knows? Uh, I guess we'd have to uh, check this book to find out exactly how long because this was actually one of my very first books at DC Comics. Um, uh, when I uh, first started getting work over there, they were giving me pinups and uh, short stories and things like that. And then uh, the first thing I scored, the first official full-length book, was Impulse Number 41. And it was a fill-in that had been written by the assistant editor. Uh, the script was put in a, in a drawer, and it was kind of half-finished. Um, but uh, I think the editor was being very kind to both me and him. Uh, when I was looking for work, he pulled it out and said, hey, finish this script up to the assistant, and we're going to hand it off to this new uh, untrained, um, untested artist who is uh, only really known for doing a book called Cyberfrog. Uh, I was happy to do it. It was uh, the second appearance of Arrowette. It was a little uh, silly, but, you know, most Impulse books are. Um, and after a few more um, bits and pieces, uh, little jobs here and there, I won the assignment to do to take over the whole title with Impulse, which was struggling with sales now. We were right on the brink of ca uh, cancellation. Um, in order to salvage the series uh, with issue number 50, uh, we were trying to secure uh, Batman and the Joker from the Bat Office uh, to borrow them. And this is difficult. I mean, the reason why Batman and the Joker aren't in every single DC book that isn't selling very well right now is because, um, you know, they don't want to flood uh, all their titles with Batman and the Joker. Uh, that would be bad for both, for the franchise. It would be bad for the characters. So uh, there needs to be a good reason. There needs to be a good story. And it doesn't need to happen all that frequently. It should be a special event. Um, this was the 50th issue of Impulse. We thought it would be funny. Um, Todd DeZego uh, was taking over the book uh, with me from, let's see, William Messner Lobes, I think was the uh, writer before. Uh, and Todd DeZego was going to start the book with me. We were the new creative team together. And here's Prentice Rollins, who uh, inked me all during this period. He inked me on uh, Impulse. He inked me on New X-Men. He inked me on Flash Iron Heights. And I think he came over and did um, some of the Green Lantern series that I worked on as well. Okay. Oh, he did Green Lantern Rebirth. I, I, don't, I shouldn't. Okay, forget that. Um, okay, so anyway, uh, this took a little while to get licensed, or not licensed, but to get permission for. Uh, in the meantime, they had me start on issue number 51, which was actually the first issue of Impulse that... Uh, I started on that I that I that I drew in my run, and then we backtracked to 50 once we got permission. This was a big deal here. They spent a little extra money on this fluorescent ink, um, on his lightning and on the title. It says Impulse Agent of the Bat. I believe there was a another book called Azrael Agent of the Bat. So this is a funny kind of knockoff of that. Uh, here's my Joker, which looks okay. Here's my silly looking Batman. And uh, this is, uh, you know, I wanted to show off. This is crazy three-point perspective here on the cover. Uh, I, I think it's okay. It works. I would make Batman bigger now. Batman would fill up this whole space. But uh, I was still a kid. Uh, this book, it looks like it came out July of 1999. That's the, the cover date. It's usually three months before that. Um, so right away, Todd DeZigo is establish establishing that um, the home that Bart lives in is fun. He's loved. Um, this is uh, Max Mercury's daughter. Um, and uh, I can't remember what her name is now. Shoot. Uh, we'll, we'll figure it out as we go. And so it's April Fool. She's going to play a little joke. She puts a rubber band around the hose of the, uh, of the faucet and then asks Bart to get a drink of water. And then, of course, haha, -ha, he sprays the heck out of himself. Ah, it's funny. Um, I'm still trying to find her name. I don't know it yet. But it's but she says, it's April Fool's. You can play a trick. You're allowed to play a trick on anybody. So Bart's little hair goes up like a devil horn. Shouldn't have said that. Bart Allen was, uh, you know, very, he was obviously super speed. And he had a short attention span. And uh, didn't really think his way through problems very well. Um, <laughs> he picks up a, an issue of Mad Magazine. Of course, DC Comics publishes Mad Magazine, DC, uh, DC Entertainment. So we were allowed to use that. Um, and here's the uh, credits page right here. You've got Todd DeZego, uh, Learn to Draw Cubby by Ethan Van Skyver, Prentice Rollins, Disappearing Ink, 
and et cetera, et cetera. Janice Chang, these books, by the way, back then were all hand lettered. So um, I would do the pencils and then the pencil pages would get handed off to Janice and Janice would go in and literally, I mean, draw in a word balloon and she would rule out the lettering and beautiful handwriting, beautiful script would um, create all of this. I think she actually drew this entire panel. I must have drawn the thumb or the finger and she drew everything else uh, there. Um, so it, it was something else. I kind of miss that. I miss uh, the hand lettering. Um, that, those hand letter pages would come back and then the inker would take it from there uh, and then clean up the whole thing with an eraser. Um, yeah, Bart's thinking about Young Justice, his buddies, Superboy and Robin, playing a joke on them. In the meantime, we cut to Gotham City. <laughs> <laughs> now, the thing is, like, I, I wanted realistic environments with this character. I wanted to really go in and do my best to draw a lot of police cars, um, draw the scene of the Smith & Johnson Novelty Company, try to make it look realistic, um, do my best to kind of bring realism to um, Commissioner Gordon. Uh, I had this problem with chins. I kept drawing these gigantic chins on people, and I kind of got it from Umberto Ramos, because he would draw big chins on people, too, and... It, <laughs> it looks like the tick. What is going on? Yeah, I mean, in a way, like, it's like, okay, should I do a cartoony Batman or should I do a realistic Batman? I don't know. Let's split the difference right there. Not great. Um, yeah. Um, look at this. What is this? A 16 panel grid? 15 panel grid. This is lunacy. Absolutely crazy. But even then, I knew, you know, shadow out Batman's face. Uh, he's talking to the Joker. The Joker's playing around with him. He's inside the warehouse and he's got hostages. Uh, Batman gets sick of it and tosses the uh, receiver away. And again, you know, look, the Batman stuff, it's all right. But I, I really, at this point, had really practiced my impulse. I practiced Bart Allen. And I drew a mean, mean impulse. Look at the lightning. We'd be seeing a lot more of this crackly uh, lightning effect uh, when I got around to Flash Rebirth, when I got a little older. Um... Here's Bart again. The whole thing is Bart thinks in pictograms. He thinks so quickly that we see pictures uh, instead of words. And he's thinking about all the practical jokes. Look, he can laugh at Robin's underpants. He enters Gotham City. Uh, Robin, I guess, is the first guy he's going to play a joke on. And he inadvertently uh, stumbles on this, um, on this hostage scene. He meets Batman for the first time. That's pretty good. Yeah, it's, that's not bad. A kind of an imposing, scary bat shape. Again, this kind of black silhouette Batman. Uh, I'd use that a lot in Green Lantern Rebirth to kind of indicate the, uh, you know, mystery of this character and, and, and the intimidation factor of, of being Batman. And here's poor little Bart. I, I got this for you. <laughs> I want to help. Oh my gosh. And then bugging the heck out of Batman at super speed. Uh, yeah. It's funny. So, you know, Bart just will not leave him alone. And Batman's saying, look, that radio has a bomb in it. Uh, he's freaking, I mean, this is, again, this is like having, a, you know, an, a seven-year-old child and trying to tell them no. And they're just, rah, 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 rah. finally, grab him by the hair, pull him in close. You listen to me. Slow down. Stop running around. You're not going to do anything. You're going to you're gonna do exactly what I say. If you're going to help here, you can be of use, but you're going to listen to to Batman. Sir, yes, sir. That's correct. This is, you know, sometimes this is how you got to get a kid's attention, I guess. I don't know. Grab him by the hair. Bring him in close. But the thing about it is, is he's, he's deputized um, Bart Allen. And Bart is uh, ready to help out. Now he's ready to, to be serious. And inside, again, I'm showing off my new newfound perspective skills here. This is three-point perspective. I keep using that as if that's um, better than anything else. I think three-point perspective... Was, was used really effectively by Joe Quesada in his Batman stories. Um, so I, I felt the same way. Um, I just thought that that would be kind of the, the warped, um, kind of outsider kind of viewpoint of uh, um, a Batman story. And that's what it does. It does kind of put you in a place where you're witnessing things. Uh, things aren't happening to you. You're, it, it feel, when three-point perspective, you feel like you're looking at something that you shouldn't be looking at because you're at an odd angle. You're, you're not at a normal angle. All right, so here's a guy with a Groucho mask. Um, 
and this is weird. It's like, you know, I didn't, I didn't draw this line here. Uh, the editor was very, very hands-on. I mean, maybe a little too hands-on. Um, here's a guy like dressed like Groucho and he's being called Groucho and there are other Marx brothers here, but, um, the editor wanted to stress that this wasn't really Groucho. This was a man in a Groucho mask or costume. So he drew this line here and then just emphasized the difference by making his skin color different than Groucho skin color. Not necessary, not necessary, especially since if this were a mask, it has a permanent, like unique facial expression of worry here. So I don't know why a mask of Groucho would have a permanent worried expression on his face or be able to change its expression. So it was, you know, I don't know. Sometimes editors make decisions that you don't agree with and, and sometimes you fight and sometimes you roll with it. Once again, three point perspective. Um, and we're going to have to go over this. I will, uh, um, I will give you a nice three point perspective once we have a two point perspective lesson. But, uh, you know, the key thing is here, we're looking into a corner, all right, where uh, the walls converge like this. And then we also see we're down on the floor and looking up. So we get to see the ceiling too. And everything is looks warped. Uh, we're here, we, we feel like we shouldn't be here in a way it's 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 a unique tool. Um, and it, it is uh, uh, intense and, um, and very, very interesting. Uh, it shouldn't be overused. I think I am overusing it here, but I'm, I'm trying to show off. This is a new job. Um, Bat, uh, Bart wants to say something. He uh, remembers that Batman said, do not talk to the Joker. Shut your mouth because whatever you say, he is going to make something of. Uh, and uh, keep your distance from the Joker as well. So as the Joker approaches him, Bart remembers. He's got to stay 20 feet from the Joker at all times with a zip backwards. And uh, the Joker is amused by this. And this is actually now, you know, we remember this? Doesn't this look like the Joker had a draw lesson that I taught you guys? There it is, right there. Oh, and he's, he's making fun of the fact that he killed the other Robin. He's like, I'm basically threatening him and saying, I don't mind killing children. I, I do it, I'll kill you too. Oh, more three point perspective. Gee whiz, so we're looking up at the ceiling, the fire, um, extinguishing system here. Um, Batman's doing his thing. He's found Joker gas attached to uh, the broken pipeline here into the sprinkler system. Um, that might be a little too much. I would, that ear looks silly. This expression's a little too ghoulish. Um, his phone says Joe Kia instead of Nokia. This is what cell phones used to look like back in 1998, 99. And uh, he is uh, scaring the, the heck out of this guy. Look at Bart. I, I I always liked his little physique. You know, he's he's got broad shoulders for a kid. Uh, he's got a, a guileless, sweet face. He listens. He's smarter than he seems. Um, but he is an airhead, and that was part of his charm. This was a really good series. He's gonna send Bart on uh, an errand. Here's a here's a bunch of things that I want you to go get. Here's a list. Go get them. Now buzz off. And he does. He goes out and he, he steals a Tyrannosaurus Rex head. Leaves a note for the museum curator, I owe you one dinosaur head. Sincerely, bar, uh, uh, secret identity, impulse. Reaches in there, uh, grabs a bunch of piranhas. There's Aquaman's severed hand in there. Uh, it's now been reduced to bones. Um, <laughs> and Batman's doing what he does. Impulse has scoured the place and, and drawn up a, a good map of what's going on inside. Batman's pleased. He did a good job. All right, teamwork. Uh, he's supposed to go around with a Polaroid camera and take uh, pictures of himself in various locations all around the world. He's happy to do that. Da -da 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 -da. Back and forth bringing stuff, and he brings some fast food from um, Big Belly Burger, which any DC Comics fan uh, recognizes that location. Um, yeah. You call this a smiley meal? And Bart says, I don't even know why they call it fast food. That was my joke. <laughs> fast food would be very slow to Bart Allen. Uh, here's everything that Bart's brought the Joker. He's brought him everything in the world. He even brought him Elvis Presley's uh, coffin. That's pretty morbid. Um, and uh, a life preserver from the Titanic. Uh, there's Crow T. Robot from Mystery Science Theater. I was a big fan, still am. And he's sitting there making uh, a poem. He's writing a poem. And uh, Bart, in the meantime, has opened up all the, <laughs> all the chattering teeth. And he's playing with them, having a good time. Will you stop playing with those? Bart's like, eh? All around. Oh, look, it's the Grinch. Uh, and here, of course, is Chico. We don't, uh, or Chico, I'm sorry, Chico Marks. Of 
Of course, it's not the real Chico Marx. We want to make sure that we delineate that face with a mask. He puts away all the chattering teeth. And uh, Chico is distracted by a set. And then, pow, Batman is in the building. Tell me, Speedy, what rhymes with obnoxious, irritating, fleet-footed super brat? Hmm, no, it doesn't. There you go. There's a nice Todd DeZego gag. Uh, we've just uh, silenced Harpo. Harpo? <laughs> That was good. That was clever. Um, yeah, this is a good Joker face. This is a great Joker face. So I'm starting to get uh, into it. I'm starting to figure out uh, how to draw this character. Uh, yeah, a lot of grid. Nine panel grid here. And I'm doing all the work. Doing all the work. Uh, he sets off the um, you know extinguishers, hoping that the whole place will be gas with Joker, Joker gas. But Batman has solved that problem. He's found it. He's fixed it. Uh, Joker's just getting wet. He's very disappointed when suddenly, of course, the shape of Batman. Whoops. And then, oh, there we go. Nice splash out of Batman dodging the Joker. And I remember drawing this. I, uh, they were really excited about this when they got it because they, they really kind of thought I was a kid. Um, and this shows some potential. I mean, this isn't, this isn't good, um, but it shows where I might be going in the future. This is a, a pretty exciting shot of the two characters. Um, and again, chasing the Joker out. This is terrific. Batman covering his head through a, a hail of bullets. Abe is crying. And uh, very Joe Quesada right here. And this is, I, I like this a lot. Again, this kid, at this point, I've become very comfortable drawing Bart Allen. And in the Umberto Ramos style with the big feet and the kind of rabbity sort of physique here with the broad shoulders. A lot of great looking hair that covers his face and that just sweet expression of um, slight confusion. Um, yeah, big hands. You know, he's just he's a great shape. I mean, he's just a great silhouette of a character. And in the background, you can see that Elvis's coffin in the confusion has fallen open and it is nothing but a weighted coffin insinuating that Elvis Presley is still alive. And don't we wish? Back here, I just noticed I put the Ten Commandment tablets. I thought Moses smashed those, but evidently uh, he didn't, and Impulse found them. Um, so on and so forth. Should I skip, skip, skip? I don't know. This is the end. All right, who cares? So at the end, they celebrate. And then there's a, you know, when you when you used to get on a book back then, there, there were letters column pages, and uh, we were able to write our hellos. Look how friendly this is. Each of us got to write a little hello message to... Uh, um, to the readers and introduce ourselves and you know um, that was uh, I mean that's the kind of company DC Comics was and still is and here's the advert for the next issue um, of uh, Impulse and uh, it's issue 51 so I'd already drawn this before I drew this so this is uh, would be a little bit more rusty than this issue is um, I had you know 51 to practice um, this character right here, screaming, is Peter David. Uh, I wanted to put him in there. Uh, I don't remember why. Oh, because he was mad at me. Ugh, okay, I'll talk. I'll tell you a little bit about that when we uh, when we get there. If I ever uh, do commentary, I'm gonna do commentary. I'm gonna do commentary for all my books. When I do commentary for Impulse Number Fifty One, uh, we'll talk about that. And uh, there you go. I mean, this is just uh, oh, the Backstreet Boys. That makes this that dates this book for you nicely. Uh, impulse number 50 um, and this book was a tremendous hit everyone everyone really liked it everyone was excited uh, the DC Comics uh, edit editorial staff liked it and the book was spared from early cancellation I think it lasted another 25 maybe 30 issues um, uh, in no small part to the success of this one uh, we had won our audience back uh, so Job well done. My career at DC Comics is off to uh, a splendid beginning. Uh, thanks for listening to this uh, commentary track. This is Comic Artist Pro Secrets. My name's Ethan Van Skyver, and uh, I will see you again soon for something else. We're, we've always got something up our sleeve. Uh, please subscribe and hit that bell for notifications. Um, have a good one. Bye-bye.